Hey everybody, it's Carl with the Tinkerverse. Uh, recently I was watching this video um, from Rich, the Louisiana hobby guy, and he was walking through making this uh, New York, New York sign for one of his uh, Patreon subscribers. So if you haven't watched Rich's video yet, um, I'll put the link down in the description. Go ahead, take a couple minutes, go watch his video, and then come on back here. Otherwise, the rest of this may not make as much sense. You'll still get some useful information out of it if you haven't seen his yet. Um, but just to put things into context, go ahead, jump over there, watch his video, I'll wait, and then come on back here when you're done. And uh, what he was showing is absolutely fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it, and this is not meant to say he's doing anything right or wrong. Um, but I just wanted to co post a couple of potential efficiency gains um, that, uh, you know, maybe some more, uh, just, just another way of doing things. Um, just as I was watching, I thought to myself, yeah, you could, that, that, that works, um, but here's another way. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys uh, an opportunity to, um, you know, maybe tweak the process a little bit. So let's go ahead and dive in. So what we've got here, and me being me, I'm not going to go with New York, New York. I'm going to go with Chai for Chicago, um, it's where I was born and raised. So I went to Chat GPT and I worked out this skyline image that you see here from uh, of an image of Chicago. Hey guys, I just want to interrupt real quick. If you want to learn how I created this image with Chat GPT or just how to use AI in general for laser engraving needs, um, you know, stick around. I'm going to be releasing a video in the near future that discusses how to leverage uh, personas and how to really hone in on uh, design styling for laser engraving using, in this case, Chat GPT. But these uh, these prompts or these uh, concepts can be applied to uh, other image generation AIs as well. So uh, just keep an eye out on the channel. Uh, I will be working on that in the coming weeks and uh, we'll let you know when it drops. So back to the video. And I took that and brought that in and just gave myself some big block letters for CHI and kind of resized everything so that it was, uh, you know, approximately where I wanted it so that we could see some of the iconic buildings like the Sears Tower and such. Um, and got everything there. So now this is where I'm going to pick up and diverge ever so slightly from what Rich was doing. So Rich took and duplicated his letters, uh, so control D, and then he moved the duplicate off over here and then proceeded to highlight this and uh, do an intersection. Okay, hang on. I can see the comments now. I know I missed a step. Um, before you can use the Boolean operators, you need to trace the image. So when I brought the image in from ChatGPT, uh, let's take a look here. It came in like this. And so what I did is I just did an Alt T and trace the image. And that gave me a vectorized version of the image that then I could use to uh, do the Boolean subtraction. Now, you can technically do this with the image. The only difference is that you would want to use image masking instead of a Boolean operator. Now I do have another video that covers the differences between uh, masking and then Boolean operations with vector images versus raster images. And just to show you um, at a high level, you know, you can do this as is. I'm just going to drop that there, resize this down. And just for the, the sake of showing this now. Let's grab both of these and I'm going to right click and say apply mask to image and it gives me the same you know similar results. So just be aware that um, if you try to do the boolean operations like I'm going to show here in a second and they're not available to you you still may be working with an image and you can tell by the mode over here if it's on image um, and in that case you're either going to mask it as an image or you're going to um, trace it for a vector and then you know once you have what you like if you decide to use the masking you can come in here and say flatten image mask and now I've got just the image mask and then you know all the rest of the steps will be the same so all right back to the video again and then at which point he had to bring this all kind of back and and reline it all back up that's perfectly fine um, but an opportunity for some time saving here is when you do the duplicate, I'm going to control D, I'm going to duplicate it, and before I do anything else, I'm just going to come click on another layer color. So I'm going to move that to blue, and then I'm going to come up here and turn off my show. So if I turn off show, what it does is it now gave me a duplicate, but it, it it's hiding it. So I can then come through here, 
select all this, bring up my Boolean assistant and do an intersection, and then bring the blue layer back and then just move it back to a black layer. Just by doing that, it realigns everything without having to kind of come in here and get finicky with placement. And then from there, you know, follow his steps as usual. Uh, so we'll do the offset. In my case, I'm going to go 6 because 5 didn't quite join the H and the I the way I wanted. So if I go 6 um, and hit OK there, and let's switch to the filled view, and there you go. So it accomplished much the same thing, but it saved the step of having to drag your duplicate out and then realign it after the fact, just by quickly moving it to another layer, hiding the layer, doing what you need to do with the Boolean operations, and then uh, and then bringing the layer back in and, and moving it back. All right, so the next game that I wanted to look at, and this is gonna be entirely dependent on the capabilities and the design of your laser. Uh, if you are using a, let's say, an open frame diode laser um, that is roughly square, so your, your X and your Y are fairly close together, um, one of the things that you could do, and one of the, er one of the area issues he was looking at was that, uh, let me group this, was that when you're really close to the boundaries on X, what ends up happening is you get an out of bounds error because your, your scan, based on your overscan, goes outside of the boundaries of your machine and it's going to cause the laser head to crash so you'd really have to bring this in and depending on the speed of your laser head you might have to bring this in further than you want uh, to uh, to allow the runoff for acceleration and deceleration so one of the things uh, that he showed was to change the scan angles so let's look at the processing time so the processing time i've got right now is roughly 38 minutes, 37 minutes and 50 seconds. And if I follow his suggestions to change the scan angle, while it will resolve the problem, it ups my estimated processing time to a little over 50 minutes. So it added almost, you know, let, let's call it 15 minutes, you know, 12 minutes, whatever, to the overall job time. Now, if you have a laser that fits this square profile, uh, one of the things you could do is actually just turn your artwork. So if I turn my artwork and I put this back on scan angle zero, I'm still getting the benefit of the really fast left to right uh, engraving speeds that you can't get on a Y engrave. Y engraving, it has to move the whole gantry back and forth, um, which is a lot of weight and a lot of uh, slow down, you know, lack of uh, lower acceleration and deceleration uh performance numbers so it can't move as fast on the y-axis as it can on the x-axis so by doing this by turning the sign sideways if your laser allows for this and setting the scan angle back to zero i've now resolved the out of bounds issue and i've brought my scan time back down to about 41 minutes so at the end i've lost you know only about two minutes instead of you know closer to 14 15 whatever it was um, so, you know, obviously not every laser is going to allow for this, but it's something to consider if you're working with, you know, within the constraints of your machine and you're really at the boundary uh, of, you know, at the out of bounds areas, um, you know, consider, can I rotate my artwork and, you know, get back to an X scan angle, a zero degree scan angle, um, and still get the same job done. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll uh, we'll leave it there. Again, you know what Rich showed was was absolutely fine. I just you know kind of was as I'm watching the video. I thought you know there's a couple of, couple of gains that could be had there. Um, take them or leave them. Uh, so anyway, all right guys, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch you next time.